Hey, good evening, everyone. How are you? Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Fine, thanks. I'm great. Thank you. You? Pretty good. Getting ready for, you know, our last class of the week. We're advancing. Yeah. Yes. It's amazing how fast the time goes by with the classes, right? Yes. Yeah, always. I always think, wow, I, I feel that when the courses begin, it's you say, ah, four weeks. It sounds like a long time. But in reality, when you begin the class, wow. It's so fast. Yes, it's fast. Mm -hmm. Okay. Will you continue? Jonathan, you're on mute. You're on mute, Jonathan. Ah, okay. Okay, okay. No, I have a question. Will you continue being our teacher? Um, normally, no. They, they, I don't know why, but they usually only give me the course once. Ah, okay. I, I, I think it's because they want you to have different accents. They want you to experience oh. people with different accents, maybe for that reason. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Ah, okay. okay. Good evening, Wilbur. Good evening. Mm -hmm. So, but you never know. Maybe uh, okay. they'll they'll have two. We, we do two levels together. <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Okay, we feel comfortable with you. Hey, I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that. That's uh, that's the idea, right? That you feel comfortable and that you really that you learn. That's that's the objective is that you feel that you are learning. Mm -hmm. How was the class yesterday? Okay. <laughs> it, yeah, I. Uh, I was your bad. room, your, your Roomba class. yesterday? <laughs> it was Roomba, uh, right? <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, I had. Uh, well, a relative. Uh, it is uh, my nephew. Mm -hmm. uh, he came from United States yesterday, so I had to go to pick him up at the airport. Ah, that's right. That's right. Uh, okay. That's a big then celebration. That's a, that is a rumba. That's yeah. right. Jonathan doesn't that's believe. Right. That's, what, that's how you call it now. No. <laughs> well, I, I think everyone is. Celebrate. What happened uh, with the souvenirs? Is, uh, like, like. I like everything that they hear is like a lie. So that's why they don't believe. <laughs> you are no, usual no. to hear that kind of stuff, right? You, you have to be a very good host. You have to invite your relate, relative or your, your niece, mm -hmm, your relative. nephew, I don't know, and yeah. go out to take, her, to take her out. Yeah, well. We're gonna go out yes, later. You have to. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be polite. <laughs> That's true. I have to. Exactly. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> okay. What point uh, did you get to yesterday? Actually, we got up to a uh, three point nine. The video. 3 .9. We finished and we were starting on 3.9, the indirect questions. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, just to recap or to review, that's another way to say it, to recap yesterday. Uh, the idea was we are using the questions at the beginning, but you are not asking the person, okay? You're asking someone else. So as an example, uh, you didn't come yesterday, right? So right. you, so you asked Jonathan what I said. So, as an example, you would tell Jonathan, Jonathan, can you tell me what the teacher said, or can you tell me uh, what the teacher gave for homework? So, because I am not speaking to you, you are asking the information to be transmitted, right? All right. It's so it's more like a, the idea you can think of is kind of like a receptionist or a secretary okay okay the ones who they're the ones who really are transmitting the information to help you understand a little bit 
I'm going to share the screen for everyone to help us review a little bit of what it is that we're looking at and how we have the different forms. So here we can see that we have our statements. For example, um, we can say, hey, Tony is having a party or someone can give you instructions and say, don't be late, right? And when we change those into indirect uh, requests, we say, hey, could you tell, and then the person, could you tell uh, Wilbur, can you tell Leymar, can you tell Jonathan that Tony is having a party, that we have exams this weekend, okay? So I say, hey, Lemar, can you tell Wilbur, because I don't have your phone number, hey, can you tell Wilbur that he needs to study for the exam? This is the indirect request, because I don't speak to you directly. I speak to Lemar or Jonathan or Andrea or somebody else, and they tell you what are the things that I said. Okay. Okay. The important part is specifically the different types of structures. As you can see, we have statements and imperatives. It's easy, right? You can just use the word, could you tell me or can you tell me? And then the information. We do not use auxiliaries. Look here, don't be late. We do not use don't. We use only the word not, not to be late. Okay, so we don't say, we do not use do, does, those words. To be no. If it is a question, we do not use the word tell. If it is a question, we use the word ask. So if it's a sentence or an order, we use tell. If it's a question, WH or yes, no, then we use the word ask. Is that okay for everyone? Not too bad. Okay. Yes. Yes. Not to be late. Okay. So that's a little bit about our, our, our review from yesterday and making sure that it's clear on how we use it, okay? So it's simple, right? Here, let me put, let me find, okay. Uh, remember, we normally use only the words, can you or could you? Both of them are fine. You, they have the same meaning only, uh, they have this pretty much the same meaning um, only the difference is just uh, if it's formal or a little informal. And really for normal conversation, it's the same. There's no difference. Okay. So we're going to practice right now in groups. We're gonna have groups of three and we're going to practice making questions with can you, could you, okay? So imagine Marcela and Ivania are my partners. Marcela and Ivania. So I'm going to tell Marcela, hey, Marcela, can you tell Ivania uh, to study for the exam? Or can you ask Ivania if she is going to go to the party? We're going to practice making them. If you're not sure how to make them, you can use the video on 3.9 to give you the idea of what is the correct structure. The video on 3.9, you will have the opportunity to see clearly that how to change the direct statement to indirect. So here, I show you one more time just to be sure. Okay, this is from 3.9. And here you can see if you have a sentence, for example, uh, my mom is sick or my mom is going shopping. And you can see how you change it to this. Could you tell the person? Could you tell Jaime, Wilbur, Andrea, Michelle, Livania uh, that my mom is going shopping? Or it's okay, the idea? Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, teacher, I oh. mm -hmm. enter late for the class. Uh, repeat, Ray. Uh, okay. So what we're going one more time. To, yes, of course. No problem. What we're going to do is we are going to use the indirect request that we learned yesterday and that we're reviewing to make questions to our partners. So we're going to say, can you or could you? And then depend if it's a sentence or an order is can you tell and then the person in your group not to or to do whatever. So I'm gonna share the screen one more time. 
so that it's easier to understand. Okay, so one more time. We're going to have here, we're going to have the idea. So imagine my partner is uh, Wilbur and Lemar. I'm going to say to Lemar, right? Lemar, could you tell Wilbur that, uh, I don't know, that Jonathan is going to be late? Okay. Or uh, Lemar, can you tell Wilbur uh, to study for the exam? Because it's an imperative. If you want, think of the sentence that you want first and then make the sentence into the indirect request. Okay. Is that okay for everyone now? Yes, teacher. Okay, yes. perfect. All right. Then, yes, it is. okay. So let's make up our rooms and let's see. Um, we're going to try just a few minutes. So we're going to have, yeah, let's go with four minutes for our partners. Give to Jeff. This is in the form of an imperative. So, how do we go about changing this into um, an indirect request? Well, again, we mentioned we will use could, and then we'll use you. Uh, in this case, we will use the verb tell. The object I mentioned is Jeff. All right, so we will say, could you tell Jeff? And if you notice, this is not in a negative form, so therefore, we will not use not okay and we will simply use the infinitive form could you tell could you tell jeff to bring some drinks for the party there we go um, and this is what i refer to or this is what we refer to whenever we say that that's an infinitive right so um it, to bring um or not to uh, and then the verb right so if we have a negative form, we will use not to and then the verb. If we have a positive form, we will say to and then plus the verb. That's what we mean by that. So could you tell Jeff to bring some drinks for the party? And that's how we turn that imperative into an indirect request. So let's practice making a series of imperatives and we're gonna do the exercise of changing those into indirect requests. So all the messages are directed towards Jeff. So Jeff, be on time. Okay. Uh, maybe uh, Jeff, tell your friends that they are invited to the party. Okay. Jeff, bring your iPod. So there we go. We got a series of statements there on the bottom. What we want to do with that is we want to change those into an indirect request. So as I'm doing them, uh, you should also be uh, doing them yourself as well to make sure that you are understanding this topic. So let's do the first one together. So Jeff, be on time. Um, again, we will say, could you tell Jeff? And that is not negative. So therefore, we will say, we will change be on time to to be on time. Okay. Jeff, tell your friends that they are invited to the party. All right. We will do something similar. We will say, could you tell Jeff to tell his friend? Hey, Mary.
Okay. It feels like we need more time to talk. <laughs> yes, when when you're with pressure with time, you say, oh my God, it's so fast. <laughs> That's true. Five minutes is, is very perhaps, fast. Perhaps you were showing your gifts that your nephew uh, um, brought to you? Well, he didn't bring, so I don't have gifts. <laughs> That's too bad. No. He <laughs> is the gift. Only money. Only, Only money, money, no money gift. To spend. Only or money. maybe bitcoins. Yeah, exactly. Bitcoins. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we're going to continue learning about the indirect, okay, indirect questions, indirect requests, but using the words if or whether, okay? So now we're going to see a little bit more information about it because it gets a little bit more complicated. By the end of this class, you'll learn how to make indirect requests. We use indirect requests when you want to give a message to someone who is not present or not available. Let's say, for example, you call a person and the person is not there. Can you hear the volume? Because I think it's a little soft, but can you hear it or no? Too low. No, I can hear it. It's very low, right? Very low. Yes, very low. It's too low. The video, yes. I think, has has a low volume. Yes, the video. Already, uh, I already uh, played before, and it sounds very low. Yes, it's bad quality in that end, I think. Could you ask Sophia whether she's free on Friday? Yes, it's the it's the video. Mm -hmm. It's the sound of it. How we can ask the same thing. So what we're going to do right now is... Okay. Okay. So as an example, here's a question, a direct question. Do you have a date for a party? Right? We make a question with... Normal, the auxiliary, do, does, things like that, right? Do you eat pupusas? Do you like soda? Do you, the normal questions. But when we make the indirect request, could you ask? Could you ask? Because it's a question, it's not a sentence. It's a question. So we say, could you ask? And now we're going to see how we make it. So you see, the only thing that we add is the if, right? And we don't use the do, we use if, and then who are we talking about? In this case, we are talking about Jennifer. So we use the pronoun she, and then the rest as a date for the party, like a sentence. So if I'm speaking directly to Jennifer, I say, hey, Jennifer, do you have a date for the party? But if Jennifer is not here, and her sister, Andrea, is here. I ask Andrea, hey, Andrea, could you ask Jennifer if she has a date for the party? Okay. So the same idea. With the way to put it. Another way could be, okay. another way to and then another form is the same, like if, but the other word you can use is whether whether she has a date for the party. These are the different forms to ask the question. It's not necessary only if. You can change for whether if you want. It has the same meaning. Okay. And here it says, could you ask Jennifer whether or no? It should not be no. It should be whether or not she has a date for the party. The no is not correct. It's whether or not. She has a date for the party. So as we can see, the beginning, look, the white, the beginning is the same. Could you ask? Could you ask? Could you ask? Then the yellow, you can change. If, she has whether or not, and then the green is the same. She has a date for the party. She has a date for the party. And she has a date for the party. That is the way that we make it correctly. So only... If it's a question, then it's just you can change for if, right? Okay. 
Is that part okay? Yes. Okay. Yes, okay. Yes. Okay, so what we want to do is, it's a little complicated, so we want to try with our partners. We want to see if we understand how to make indirect requests. So with our partners, we're going to go to Knowledge Check 3.12. <clears throat> I'll show you. Knowledge, knowledge check 3.12. And there are only four statements, but you need to check with your partner how to make the message correctly, what to put correctly. Okay. So for this one, we're going to take about the same amount of time, about four minutes, so that you and your partners can read and analyze without having to think, oh, so much, so much pressure. No. The important is to make it correct. Okay. You guys ready? Yes. Okay. Ready. Okay. Let's go. Neymar, are you okay? Do you have some difficulty? Lemar, do you have any questions? Are you having problems? Hi, teacher. I don't know what's going on with my computer, but when you send me to a, a, a some kind of room, mm -hmm. I don't know. But it's like loading, loading, loading. I couldn't do. I, I didn't. Not, I don't know what. I, I couldn't no do problem. Anything. It's okay. You 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 stay here and you practice with Jose. So Jose is here also. So Jose, you and Jose can practice the indirect request, right? Okay. Jose, we're on uh, knowledge check three point twelve. Okay. So that way? Yes, I'm on the phone. I'm, I worry. have the, I can see in the computer the, the, the 3.12, yes. but I'm in the Zoom by, by my phone. So I, that's fine. I can do that. mm -hmm. Jose, can you see the exercises 3.12? Okay, good. Right now, I am going to there to try to, to enter. Perfect, perfect. So you and Lemar are going to try to answer those questions together. Um, but in, in, in this case, I have like, in the first one, we have two questions. So what am I supposed to, to oh, Um, say, Tony, how many friends can I bring to the party? Right. So in the other one, say, how many friends I can bring to, to his party? So, o sea, se, tendría que ser como decirle a fulano si cuántos amigos puedo llevar, así. Yeah, oh. exactly. So you're talking to, you want, you, you are not talking to Tony, right? You're, you want to ask somebody to tell Tony. 
Okay, so can you ask Tony if tal cosa? Something exactly, like that? that's it. Okay. Exactly. Can you ask Tony? And that, that would be the correct one for number one. Exactly. Uh, and I, I only have to, to, to put, can you ask? Can you ask Tony, can you ask Tony? Remember, can you ask Tony, and, and the rest of it is the one the the, the one is writing right here, right? Yes, but okay. yes, but we we already finished the time. But yes, that was correct. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> good. Let's do it together. So. <laughs> Don't worry, we're gonna check it together to make sure that it's correct. All right. Okay. Okay. How did you guys do? Was it okay? For example, I'm going to say the number one. Okay. Uh, can you ask Tony how many, uh, if, can you ask Tony whether how many friends I can bring to this party, to his party? No, no, no. And the only thing that you need to put is could, uh, can you ask Tony? And then the question is there, how many friends can I bring to the party? So only can you ask Tony? That's it. How many Number friends one? I can bring to his party? Exactly. Can or could, right? Because the two answers are the same. You can use okay. or you can use could. And both answers would be correct. So the second one, uh, could it be, can you ask Sophia if, she, if she's going to the party in, with Jeff, something like that? Good. Can, that's right. Could you ask Sophia if she's going to the party with Jeff? And that would be okay. exactly. I have the same uh, the same answer. Yeah. What about number three? What would be number three? I use I use um. Could you ask Kevin? Correct. That is correct. Could you ask Kevin? Whether or not he accepted the invitation to Tony's party. Exactly. And finally, number four. Could you ask Mario if he's going to, to give Tony a gift? Good. If he's going to give Tony a gift. Perfect. So I wrote down the answers that you gave me. And here. So that you can see that those are the correct answers. If it's wrong for you, it's probably for something that you didn't put correctly. But the answers, you see number one, can you ask Tony? Number two, could you ask Sophia? But we only need to put if she's going to the party with Jeff, okay? That's what our partner said and that was correct. Number three, we only need to put, ah, here we're talking to Kevin. So we only need to put, could you ask Kevin or can you? Remember, you can change can or could is the same meaning. But number four, could you ask Mario if he is going to give, let's see, Tony a gift. Because if he's going, right here we go. If he's going to give Tony a gift. Everybody has the answers they put into the platform? Yes. 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 Excellent, excellent, guys. Great. Any questions for that? No. No? It's super easy, right? Yes or yes? Yes. Excellent. Great. Okay. So. <laughs> Now we're going to have an opportunity. Just, just practicing. Just practicing is going to be easy. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Right now we're going to practice. That's the idea. Now that we have the idea again, now we're going to make other groups and we're going to practice. You're going to imagine you want to leave a message, right? So you want to leave a message for the other partner. So imagine that my partner is Ada and Rodrigo. Okay. I want to give Ada a message, but Ada is not home. Rodrigo, her brother, is. Hey, so I say, hey, Rodrigo, can you tell Ada that I'm going to be late to the party? 
or hey Rodrigo, can you ask Alda if she has seen my cell phone? Right? And then Rodrigo is going to answer, sure, no problem, of course, let me check. And then, then Rodrigo is going to ask Ala to ask me. And then Ala is going to ask me to ask Rodrigo. So we're going to make like a little circle, right? You ask one partner, that partner asks the other, and like this, so we can practice. I one example to be clear, right? Let's do one example in the right now. So it's okay. Natalie, can you be my partner? Okay. Okay, so Natalie is my partner and Wilbur is my partner. Wilbur, can you be my partner? Yeah, all right. Okay, good. So let's give one example complete, one complete example to the class. Natalie, can you ask Wilbur uh, if he has money? Okay. Is there a... And when you ask, it's, it's correct. Can you tell me mm -hmm. if you have money? More or less, Natalie. Good. That's a good, that's a polite request. But it's only necessary. Hey, Wilbur, do you have money? Mm. So uh, I have to answer Natalie, right? No, 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 no. Don't, you don't worry. Don't worry. So... Now, I only make the question, right? And Natalie says, sure, or okay, no problem. Now, Natalie, make a question to Wilbur to ask me. Oh, okay, okay, no problem. Wilbur, could you ask to, uh, the teacher? Edwin, uh, mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh, if he, can let me twenty dollars. Okay. Exactly. Uh, sure. No problem, right? I I, I think okay, yeah. I'll do it. Good. When I now, see him. Good. <laughs> now will you ask me a question to ask Natalie? Okay. Uh teacher, um can you so I have to tell you something that you have to ask Natalie, right? Yes, to ask Natalie or to tell Natalie, correct. Okay, Patricia, can you ask uh, Natalie uh, if she's going to be on class on Monday? If she's going to be in class on Monday, of course I can. All right, thanks. And that's the idea. So the idea is we are going to try to make three complete circles, three complete circles. I asked nothing, Nati asked Wilbur, Wilbur asked me is one circle. Then oh, okay. Nati, Nati asked Wilbur, Wilbur asked me is two circles. Okay. And then I asked Nati, Nati asked Wilbur, Wilbur asked me three complete circles. As fast as we can. Yeah, not as fast as you can, you have a time. In five, in five minutes, the, the break room closes. So <laughs> you have <laughs> five minutes to complete three circles. Three circles. Before we go, are there any questions? No. No? It's okay? Teacher, and this is on the platform or just a speak activity? This is in the platform. The, the, the information, the information is in the platform and it's actually four videos. It's four videos in the platform. Um, if you want to see, this is from video 3.8, 3.9, 3.10 and 3.11. And the topic is complicated. That's why they have four videos. But in the class, we have the idea and we're going to practice the speaking exercise. Okay, thank, thank, okay. thank you, Tich. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Of course, of course. All right, guys, let's make our rooms. Let's practice it. Three circles, three complete circles. Ah, that's right. I almost forgot Neymar. 
they do have problems with the connection, right? Lemai, are you able to connect in the other group with a cell phone? You can, okay, we see. I haven't received an invitation yet. I don't know where am I. <laughs> okay, I don't know okay. if, I should, if I should be in a in a room. Yes, yes, you should be in room number two, I think, or or five. I think room number five. Friends. So, Jennifer, you have my number. This is actually the example that is here. Could you ask? Hi, everyone. By the end of this class, you'll learn how to make indirect requests. So we use indirect requests when you want to give a message to someone who is not present or not available. Let's say, for example, you call a person and the person is not there, but you leave a message. This is what we call an indirect request. Today, we're going to focus on turning WH questions into indirect requests. For example, let's say we want to know what time a particular event starts, um, and we want to leave the message. So. Uh, could you ask Sophia what time the party starts? This is what we're going to be doing throughout this lesson. So let's try to make sense on how we turn WH questions into indirect requests. So first of all, let me just uh, write down these couple of questions that we see here, this, those two WH questions. And I also want to write down the formula, if you will, in order to change WH question into an indirect request. So I want you to notice the first question, right? So it says, Jeff, when does the party start? This is the message that I want to give to, let's say, Jeff receptionist. And so I want to make that uh, by saying, can you ask Jeff when the party starts? This is how we turn this WH question into an indirect request. So what exactly is it that we did? Well, first of all, we added, can you ask? As I mentioned, let me highlight that in a particular color. I'm going to go ahead and choose yellow this time. I included Jeff. That's the object, right? So we include Jeff. That's the object. OK. And then I include the WH word. I'm going to go ahead and highlight this in another color just to make sure that we're getting this. All right? When? And then uh, finally, we include the statement, if you will. All right? The, um, and so that's what this is at this point. Let me go ahead and uh, color this in red to make sure that we are understanding this. So um, I want you to notice a couple of things from this. One is that this is a WH question. Uh, and therefore, we need to use the auxiliary does. In this case, this auxiliary disappears. Right? So it's no longer going to be present in our indirect request. Uh, the next thing is that because this disappear, the verb also needs to match with the uh, subject. Right? So because the party is third person, this verb needs to have an S, as you can see there. I'm going to go ahead and put that in green just to make sure that you can clearly see what's happening.
Okay, guys. How did you feel? Did you did you have any difficulties? What any questions about it? It was a good practice. So you felt that it was that it's okay, it's clear. Yeah, it's clear. Yeah. The concept is clear, teacher. Good, good. I'm I'm looking at the, the, the screen. I don't know. With the Inglés Corporativo, like when I move, I see that it, sometimes I look like I'm white, or sometimes you see me, it's not. Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes it happens. Okay, guys. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. Seems that Inglés Corporativo is, is, is in your soul. That's why right. you shine like this. <laughs> <laughs> you disappear. That's why he's shining. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I see. It looks like like I'm shining sometimes. Okay. Well, great. So now that we have the idea, let me explain a little bit about how is the exam. I know some of you have already started, which is great. That's excellent that you have already started. And others haven't started. And that's okay. It's not a problem. You're going to do the exam or the midterm this weekend, right? So let me uh, to you. Yes, yes, Alejandro. I finished the platform. You already uh, finished? Yes, I already finished. Excellent, excellent. Good example. Good example for the others. Okay. But, can we repeat the exam or only once? No, no, no. You can repeat. Only one opportunity. No, no, no. If you, you can repeat it. So if you have a bad grade, you, you study more, you review, and then you can do it again till you have to. Remember, the minimum is 80. 80 is How many times can, can we repeat it? When you get 80, then you can stop. Oh. <laughs> until, yes. until Monday. <laughs> Repeat it. Until one day, until one day, <laughs> you receive the 80. Okay. okay. So let me show you a little bit how it works. In the exam, is only you click in the midterm, and you're going to receive this page. As you can see, there are many sections, okay? We have a total from A to F. Section A is listening, okay? When you do the listening, if you click here, it's not going to open, just like in the other. You have to click on external window and then it opens. My recommendation to do it the best way is first read the questions. Read the questions and the possible answers. Then, after you read the question and the answers, then listen and click the ones, okay? If you feel comfortable, you can put enter. You can put submit. If you, if you are not comfortable with your answers, okay, listen the second time and check your answers. Check your response. Is it the same or do you want to change it for each one, okay? That's the best way to do the listening. One more time, the best way to do the listening is first read the question and the answers. Then you go back, listen to the conversation. And when you are listening, you are selecting in the same moment, listening and selecting, listening and selecting. Then if you are comfortable and you say, yes, easy, then you click submit. If you say, mm, I don't know, ah, it's okay. You listen again and check that you want those answers. Is section okay? Section A okay? Did you understand how to do the listening? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Section B is only vocabulary. Section B, you read and you select the correct vocabulary, which is the correct word to complete the sentences. Again, only four sentences and you only well, select and that's it part c is a little bit different because part c is you have the vocabulary you have all of the words but you need to put into the correct form remember when you put into the correct form you need to put if it has capital you need to put capital if it's a period you need to put period if it's a question you need to put question but i think all are sentences okay so it's not only the word but also the correct punctuation capital letter period things like that 
This is letter C, to put the words in the correct order. Are we okay? Yes. Yes. All right, great. Now, part D, these are Jevon phrases. For this, only you read and you select the appropriate answer because it's not one word, it's a phrase, right? Or an expression. So you read and you choose which gerund phrase is the correct. Letter E, again, we are taking a look at comparatives. You remember more than, as, less than, better than, all of those comparatives that we learned and we practiced that's what you're going to read and select. So it's vocabulary and the grammar. So you have to remember what are the meaning of the words and how to use them with comparatives. And then the last part is the reading that is, now for the reading, maybe it's a little difficult to read because it's a little small, okay? So what I recommend is if possible, you can make bigger. You can make bigger using the here, in the search bar, you click the three buttons and you can make as big as you need to in order to answer the questions, okay? Because there is a little small, but you can make it bigger if you want. And then that is the last part of the exam. Any questions for that? No, no question. Okay, just just for being clear. Yes. Uh, we can do it as many times. I mean, if we if you have if a we make a mistake, we can repeat. Yes, correct. If you make a mistake, you can oh. or if you feel that you say, Hey, I, I want to try, for example, section A today and then section B tomorrow. It's okay. You can do one section one day and another section another day because sometimes you don't have time to do all of the sections in one moment. Maybe, for example, tonight, okay, yes. you say tonight, ah, I'm going to do part A, but then you say, oh, I'm tired, and then you do part B tomorrow. It's okay. It's necessary to do the exam in one day. Oh. Do two parts. This quiz is very flexible, I think. It's yes. good, but it's good. Yes. Uh -huh, because sometimes lose electricity or something happened. No, you, you, we have to, we have to. Yeah. Is this a Salvador? <laughs> Only with a little rain? In Salvador. <laughs> right? Yeah, I know. There okay. is no way yes, that yes, someone you're right, can, you're right. uh, can give an excuse uh, if he got a, a low score, right? Mm -hmm. No gray. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. That would no be an earthquake. I don't <laughs> <laughs> a, a, a fire fire in your house, your kitchen is getting fire. <laughs> no. Teacher, or when yes. is the when is the last your computer is going to explode? Sergio, sorry. Excuse me. Uh, uh, when uh, is the last day to finish the exam? The midterm Monday. Thank you. You're welcome. So. Really, you have practically five days, right? Because you have today, tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday to complete. You can take longer, but I don't recommend because uh, remember, every day we advance. And then you are learning unit four, you are learning unit five, and it's difficult to remember, to remember, to remember the, the unit one and two and three. Okay. Great, so if there are no questions, now we're going to go back to our speaking activities. Uh, before we go to our next speaking activity, are there any questions? Did we finish section three already? Yes. Yeah, right. Yes, yes, yes. That was the last part was that it, the indirect questions and indirect requests. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so now we're going to talk and we're going to practice for a few minutes with our partners. We want to use the future tenses. We have two types of future. We have going to and will. Do you remember the difference? No. 
No. No one remembers? Uh-huh, because everyone is quiet. Huh? Uh, perhaps, to, teacher, perhaps, perhaps teacher going is you know that you you do that and will is like perhaps but I am not sure. no no that is correct Jose going to is you plan will you don't know will is like perhaps or maybe if you say maybe is will if you say yes is going to so, for example, some people, I am going to church on Sunday because they do always. Other people, mm, I don't know. I will eat pupusas. Maybe. It's okay, the difference? Okay. Good. In this moment, we are going to practice with our partners asking and answering those types of questions. Okay. So, what are we going to do? We're going to ask and answer each other questions about this weekend what we're going to do this weekend Hey, Jonathan, any questions? Okay.
Okay, guys. So, how were the questions? The answers? How do you feel? Yeah. Very good. Um, do, you, do you remember how to use it? Yes. Yes, I remember. Yes. Yes, I do. Okay, good. Nati, did you did you want to ask something? No. No. You sure? Yes, I'm sure. Okay, all right. I think I heard somebody say, ah, and then they stop. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I would like you, if you could give me some examples, because I I of thought course. like I'm going is, is something like I'm going to do me, right now in a few minutes or something like that. No, going to is nothing with the time. The going to is not with time. It's only if you plan or don't plan. For example, uh, if you buy a ticket to go to Mexico in December, is I'm going to go to Mexico in December. But if only you imagine one day, ah, I want to go. Ah, one day I will go to Mexico because you don't plan. It's not for the time. It's if you plan, going to. If you don't plan, excuse me, if you don't, plan, will. If I wanna, if, if somebody asks me, hey, are you gonna come? I say, yes, I will be there. I'll be there. I'm using will and I'm, or like, yeah, and I can say too, I'm gonna be there. Correct. I will be there is because you make the decision in the moment. I'm going to be there is because you already plan to make the decision. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. All right, guys. Well, remember complete. Uh, the midterm you should be complete with unit three and on monday we are going to continue prepare because next week you have oral presentations i say this in spanish la otra semana tiene presentaciones orales algún cuento típico del salvador la ciguanaba el ciputillo la carreta chillona uh, después no me ven en la otra semana eco no no nos avisó Teacher, les avisé con cinco días antes de lo que otra semana. But have a good weekend. Teacher. <laughs> <laughs> okay.
We are going to dream with the Siwanaba. Yes, yes, yes. That's <laughs> our cousin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Have a great weekend. I see you on Monday. You too. Have a great weekend. See you. See you. you. Bye. 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 Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.